Unit 4 Philosophical Considerations This unit is divided into five sections. Section 1 Truth In the previous unit, science was characterized as an activity which systematically questions existing knowledge and generates and distributes new knowledge. The term knowledge implies a description of reality. However, the description of a complex reality is quite an ambitious task that is doomed to fail. Knowledge is often merely an approximation of reality. Therefore, the term truth is used in order to measure the precision of knowledge. Ontology is the branch of philosophy that studies the nature of reality and deals implicitly with issues of truth. The term truth in itself is quite vague. In an ideal or perfect world, scientists would aim for absolute truth. The concept of absolute truth should be viewed as an ideal theoretic concept. Due to their precise character, natural sciences are sometimes viewed as disciplines dealing with matters of absolute truth. However, absolute truth should be understood as being inaccessible by human beings. Even minimal inaccuracies of measurement while conducting experimental or empirical research would fail the objective of absolute truth. In an imperfect world, scientists can only aim for relative truth. Due to their character, natural sciences are in a good position to aim for relative truth. As a result of the complex character of their research problems, social sciences face considerable obstacles while aiming for relative truth. Section 2. Theories of Truth Over the centuries, philosophers concerned with the nature of truth have developed different theories of truth. The complexity of these theories goes way beyond this course. Still, three theories shall be briefly mentioned in order to present different perceptions of the term truth. The correspondence theory of truth postulates that a scientific statement is true if it corresponds with observable facts and circumstances of reality. The correspondence theory of truth predominantly matches and supports empirical research in which numerical and non-numerical data is collected in order to test hypotheses and thereby to support conclusions and propositions. The coherence theory of truth postulates that a scientific statement is true if it is terminologically and logically consistent or coherent with an established system of statements. The coherence theory of truth predominantly matches and supports literature-based research and theoretical research, in which researchers base their thoughts on documented previous knowledge. The consensus theory of truth postulates that a scientific statement is true if all benevolent experts agree with it. The consensus theory of truth predominantly matches and supports developmental research, which can be found amongst others in engineering sciences, as well as in fine arts and other disciplines. Here, the research task lays in the development of a prototype or object that satisfies certain predetermined objectives. Typically, more than one possibility exists that satisfies the objectives. Hence, the opinion of experts might be used in order to determine the truth of the scientific statement. Section 3. Ontological Positions Previously, ontology has been defined as the branch of philosophy that studies the nature of reality and deals implicitly with issues of truth. More precisely, social ontology studies the nature of reality with respect to social entities. 
Compared to natural sciences and formal sciences, social sciences are confronted with social phenomena which poses specific problems for the research process. There are two competing major philosophical positions that address social ontology. Objectivism and subjectivism. The latter one is alternatively called social constructionism or social constructivism. Objectivism postulates that social entities are objective entities independent from social actors. Social entities exist as external phenomena. Social entities are independent of social actors. In contradiction, subjectivism postulates that social entities are socially constructed phenomena. Perceptions and actions of social actors create social phenomena. Moreover, social actions constantly change social phenomena. The relevance of ontological positions for research can be exemplified by the example of accounting research. A first researcher who favors objectivism could assert that accounting exists independently of its social environment. As a result, the researcher would ignore social aspects while merely focusing on technocratic aspects of accounting. An objectivist position, for example, might be helpful if a researcher wants to analyze different techniques of double-entry bookkeeping on an abstract basis. A second researcher who favors subjectivism could assert that accounting is impacted by the prevailing social environment. In addition, To technocratic aspects, the researcher would address social aspects of accounting. A subjectivist position, for example, might be helpful if a researcher wants to analyze accidental bookkeeping errors or deliberate accounting fraud. Obviously, the behavior of social actors plays an important role for the analysis of these issues. Generally, both ontological positions are justified. Nevertheless, they imply the application of different methods to the problem. Some researchers favor a proximity to natural sciences and formal sciences, often viewed as hard sciences. These researchers might orientate their work towards objectivism. However, an ontological position of objectivism does not automatically provide credit to research output if it is not suitable for a research problem at hand. Therefore, one should keep in mind that an ontological position, be it objectivism or subjectivism, has to be carefully chosen. Section 4. Epistemic Objectives Sciences aim for knowledge about reality. The goals for the derivation of knowledge are called epistemic objectives. In the following, the four principal epistemic objectives need to be introduced and discussed. A descriptive objective serves the description or characterization. The descriptive objective addresses the description and systematization of real and observable facts and circumstances. The researcher asks the question, How is something? An explanatory objective serves the explanation or explication. The explanatory objective addresses the explanation of the described and systematized facts and circumstances via hypotheses of causes and effects. The researcher asks the question, why is something the way it is? A prescriptive objective serves the prescription or instruction. The prescriptive objective addresses the postulation of guidance and objectives for actions to be taken and rules for decisions to be made. The researcher asks the question, how should something be done? A predictive objective serves the prediction or projection. The predictive objective addresses the derivation of a position with respect to a future situation, meaning an expected development. The researcher asks the question, how will something be in the future? The four epistemic objectives can be exemplified by the following research topics. The topic of a research project could be expansion strategies of car manufacturers in China. 
This topic would imply a descriptive objective. The researchers would have to elaborate on a given situation in a special market segment. The topic of a research project could be motivations for expansion strategies of car manufacturers in China. This topic would imply an explanatory objective. The researchers would have to elaborate on the reasons for the application of different strategies in a given market segment. The topic of a research project could be optimal expansion strategies for car manufacturers in China. This topic would imply a prescriptive objective. The researchers would have to elaborate on instructions for different strategies in a given market segment. The topic of a research project could be expected expansion strategies of car manufacturers in China. This topic would imply a predictive objective. The researchers would have to project the expected application of different strategic options in a given market segment. Section 5. Model In the previous sections, science was characterized as an activity which systematically aims for knowledge that describes reality. In the majority of cases, it is not possible to fully describe the complexity of a given segment of reality. Therefore, a simplification of reality is needed. Models are simplified illustrations of real situations. Their purpose is to solve problems which cannot be solved based on reality. The main characteristic of models is the simplification of a given or expected situation. Accordingly, complexity should be decreased by selecting the relevant phenomena and connections. Basically, two different procedures of model deduction can be distinguished. Reductive models Reductive models reduce reality by isolating and selecting single observed phenomena and connections. In other words, one reaches from reality to the model via abstraction. Constructive models Constructive models construct based on a theory and selected general phenomena and connection of reality, a simplified model of a fictitious reality. In other words, one reaches from a theory to a model via construction. Let us explain this logic with a simple example. A company runs a plant abroad. The reality of this plant can be illustrated in an abstract and isolated way within the framework of accounting. Obviously, it can solely be an abstract illustration, as the accounting for the plant is not the plant itself. In other words, accounting is a model that illustrates the economic activities of the plant in a simplified way. Consequently, the accounting for the plant is based on a reductive model. In a second step, the company intends to build an additional plant in another country. In order to be able to decide whether to undertake the investment, the management needs a financial projection, which will be realized with the help of a spreadsheet software. However, this financial projection is not based on a real plant. Instead, its construction is based on generally accepted technical and economic rules. Together with empirical values and anticipated data, these technical and economic rules form the basis for the financial projection. Consequently, the financial projection is a constructive model. <laughs>